central walking came out. So we are just responding in the same fashion that any other board would. So in December, yes, hiatus, don't have a meeting. Our ever development plan came in that window of the holiday season. We have no choice. You know, we can't exercise uh, abstinence and say, well, you know what, we're not going to convene because it's the holidays. The other, again, relationships with the board on their that level with their development I, I wasn't over Christmas. Yeah. I understand the reason we had the meeting, or, or it was because I didn't vote against it, I just more or less abstained. But, but I brought up the fact a couple of months earlier that I thought, you know, for, for outside reasons, not my own personal reasons, that, that we didn't need to meet in December. But then we had the October, November campaign thing. <laughs> yeah, that's my yes. point. Yes. Yes. But, but the new neighborhood <laughs> plan. I've been advised that we can, and we have to meet at least nine times a year. We don't have to meet any of that. Or whatever. Well, we got growing pains. You know, those, those, we, got, we got growing pains where, you know, we, we're, not, we're, not, we're not denying. We, we need every month. We're behind. Well, we are behind. It, it, if, we, if, we, if we had more committee meetings, <coughs> We can get more done. Yeah. I think. Thank you. My own personal opinion. You know, I've been holding county meetings and not even on that agenda on the websites that I can help. I, I'm not arguing with you. <laughs> you know that I show up at community meetings. Yeah. So you know I'm even yeah. there. But, but what I'm saying is, we have a lot of committee meetings that never meet at all. At all. Yeah. So, yeah. my suggestion in the future is that we get a different committee, you know, chairman. And maybe they'll meet more. And then I, I propose, I don't know if we were there, but I propose to have, like, parks and recreation. I think we need a green environment. Or we need, you know, beaches to go along as far as we can link to the green creation. Because all the groups that I've heard have been somebody involved in parks, beaches, and recreation are all about uh, this particular board and just for parks and recreation. Help each so I, 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 I would be more than happy to, to take that. You know, Let's plan and brought it up months on end that let's expand upon that. Let's assume these so-called executive committees. We do. Back in the first election process, we had Gennaro Vimbo on that board and he was like, he would assign as so-called executive committee and he would have brought that to resolve. We don't, in my opinion, should have to save up the field because of the magnitude that we have preservation of that on the calendar. We have conflict of wars that this state has, like no other state participated in conflict of wars. The State Historical Preservation Division of the Neil doesn't even have an officer of the caliber of finding a Native Hawaiian's bones and Yeah, you We have two down planes, nearly two down airplanes, the Japanese bombers, two zeros looking down the back. As far as we know, those remains are still there in situ in place. And the planes are still there. We have the ability to take save of an airfield in other World War II type events. We have a World War I memorial material. Where does it end? Where we have? Where's the resources? Everyone has an excuse. So when you talk about taking charge of the board levels, who had a community committee? I said, bring it on. Let's do it. I want to throw in there the uh, historic preservation, which can then be anything. It doesn't matter. What I'm saying is that we should have as many committees as people want to like man, you know. And then somebody wants to transportation over here. I would like to see a. a so-called, what, what Poppy does, is they have almost like a, 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 it's called an unsanctioned committee. It's not of the board executive commission recognition. It's the board recognizes the subcommittee. The board recognizes the subcommittee. Because that report on the drainage, it could be the fact that if we look at today's news and what's happening as far as drainage and rains, we are in a, we are in a quick line that by we don't even have resolved today with a map, map half drawn on our drainage plan. We're going to go into exasperate right from you, whereby we have even more of a problem. We're delaying the desalination plant, which needs to provide the water, and at the same time, we can't deal with it. Can we go to the street today? Back in Neville Beach? This is a beach. The other development plan does not remain the other two short. There's no remedy to drain. So the committee of transportation over there.
I want to come back to you. Yes, you have a piano. Oh, you because I think this is only battery. Oh, I think it just pops right off the wall. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Okay. Fine. Yeah. I think it's been, that's all it's taken all this time. <laughs> that's all right. I thought it was built yes. into the wall 657. Okay. Well, it's four minutes still here. Yeah. Mine is five minutes best. It's about to be squared. What happened to New batteries, or oh, you better put this back in. It says new, but when did they put it on? 2002, right? I don't know what. You don't know when the batteries are dead because the clock won't work. <laughs> I don't believe that new batteries was put in in 2000. <laughs> There he is. So we're just kind of up to date, bringing the fact that we've got on the top of the neighborhood board, the EDP for the full board's regular meeting. Actually, as a committee meeting, which is far better. Yes, you're in stride to take action as a full board prior to the January 30th deadline. That's that's what we're discussing. And hopefully with, with, with six board members tonight, we can do that here. You know what, Dr. Dudley, we don't get two more board members that show up. And I'm saying this. Yes. Remember, remember the days of when we grew up? We would have to, on a Saturday or Sunday, we'd call our buddies and we'd get a game going at the corner. Softball field. Nobody calls anybody anymore. Did we have a game plan tonight? And I, would, I think we should be on the phone getting board members here to get a quorum. And we can conduct business. You need two more, right? Two more. But who's, making the, who's telling them we're on? Chair Hargrave said meetings canceled. He did. Celeste, you yeah. call Celeste, you might go. Huh? Celeste might go if you were to go. Uh, give me your phone number. I'll make a phone call. Um, is it 6 8 9 one 0 I think it's that's it. Um, how do you, who's on the board? We have an officer present, uh, Scott Belfer, who's able to, as being an officer, convene the meeting upon six members present tonight. Because so far we have the chair and vice chair not here, and he's our uh, he's our um, treasurer. I don't know the number, man. I'm pretty sure he's our treasurer. I know it's forty one hundred, but yeah, I don't yeah, know the yeah. first three. Uh, who came yeah, last then? Well, something for Favela. They probably have them. Scott's got internet capabilities and go online and get the phone right online. But what I'm saying is. Ask them if they'll call or give you phone numbers. I don't have any phone numbers. I, it's, you know what, it's up to Belford right now. He's the guy that's got the interconnectivity and it's his computer. If he wants to go up and give us the phone numbers, I'll start making phone calls. You know, we got about five, ten minutes from my understanding. This clock is fast. What exactly is the traffic? This morning, Fort Beaver Road, in and outbound, was flooded at the usual point at below Child and Family Service in Old Fort Beaver Road, oh. at, the, at the farm bottoms. Okay? Oh. That farmland has never been addressed since time immemorial. Honolulu Uli is a flood zone. And in the development schematic things of the Evan Development Plan, this is going to be all carved up. There's no keep the country country in a TOD, Trans-Oriented Development. TR Road 1600 acres, there's no open space created, conservation land increased, ag lands preserved. So if you think about what's slated for this whole Honolulu Uli, it flooded today to a degree. Because if you look at what's going on underneath the Fort Weaver Widening Project, you have this retention. It's been, it's, and the homeowners have said, the homeowners today says, I've been here 50 years. This is the worst I've seen in 50 years flooding in Honolulu really, really. Because they had to hold it back at Fort Weaver. They could not cross an out. So after this morning, they fixed the flooding. It's now mitigated. So now the water's all backing back up at the farmlands of the lower bottoms. That goes into East Cop Lake. That goes, that goes up to Farrington Highway. That's that whole goal of culture. And you have White Kelly Street, you had you had uh, 16 homes affected on White Kelly Street today. And they went over on the news the thousands of gallons of each municipality municipality wastewater treatment plant that over flooded today. We have a magnitude that we can't even handle with today's infrastructure of homes being allowed down the sea to handle a rain like today. Yeah. Where we're overflowing sewage raw, untreated into the waterways, because at this level, we can't even accommodate. So you tell me, Dr. Duffy, without a desalinization plant with a sewage treatment, we're not talking about highways anymore. If you can't even get that across to the top of the neighborhood border on transportation focused on urban boundaries, don't want to hear it. 
want to talk about that today. Everyone can remember today's rains and the floods and what happened. Because on the news, got great coverage. I see you go with the flow. That's a pun. Go with the flow. <laughs> So let's get our six members. Uh, this is John Bond, the story of John Bond. Uh, Congratulations, John. Um, this one is a troublemaker. Level runs with me. You certainly are, but uh, you've su succeeded well. well. I just wrote another letter when I uh, emailed saying to put this out the Navy. And so. so Congress gave that the story of the preservation land? President. Recognition, though, that we can still hold over. Yes, that's not really mean preservation. I mean, I mean that recognition. I know the historic. Um, thing is the uh, to be a monument is what we were aiming for. It, it was on the president's list. We know that because we had somebody there knew what was on the list, but the Navy wouldn't allow it to happen. The Department of Interior supported it though, because actually the National Park Service. That's why Dan Martinez went out there. Uh, you saw him on the Sunday uh, the Wayne Cole story. Uh, Wayne Cole's written one of the stories for us. And that's why they, they had. And Martinez out there with that uh, guy uh, on the battlefield, and so Dan Martinez was the line 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 there at the edge, and all that. That's yeah. um, significant. Yeah. And then, what was the development of the thing you're talking about? The weather? Um, the Ever Development Plan, we have a, a situation at stake where the Copley Agreement and the Dichotomy, the Copley Neighborhood Board has found nothing to be of an issue of magnitude that really warrants any action. The plan is pretty well set to go and looks good. The Evan Neighborhood Board had a legislative committee meeting, which you watched on the internet. This is one of our meetings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool, by the way. I, I thought that was the United States. I really got into it just watching. Yeah, the board said it's already six So what we have is tonight needs to bring this all of that meeting as a package, and then we can go forward and initiate some of the other issues. We need to get out of evacuation. We need to talk about recreation issues and purposes. Um, some of the, some of the uh, joint transparency and unilateral agreements to fine. But preservation, save that one airfield, is not in the plan. So these are things that we need to find. We don't have the ferry service in the plan. But here's the thing. Dr. Dudley came up with a very one-shop, one-stop shop, one-size-fits-all. His scenario is on one page of the Evan Belt plan, which I have a copy to. And it says, change the word from should to shall. And under the word shall, you have about five to six directives of which to be implemented if it were changed from should to shall. And these are the ones that I think we can put every item under the sun, whether it's from desalinization plants to the H1, H1 being in level service F, to all, all, all the impetuses of what has to transpire is in there. It says standard of living, quality of life, capacity, without defining the numbers. We can hold them accountable. We can define the numbers by changing the word should to shall there are those then so you're bullet points. Legislative language should the shell be. Evan development plan would be a verb or Yes, absolutely. The Evan development plan that we formulate as a request, the city council department of planning and permitting will in February make a decision and say, I like that language. I think that's a good recommendation from in concert Copley and Emma. Maybe not a movie, why not? We've Milani on board, and we've all said just change the word should to shall. It's so simplistic because again, what does it say? It shows you on the whole page basically. You've got a whole definition of an outline because we could piecemeal this to death. And then you know what? We wind up getting nothing. I had put together with Dr. Dudley trying to define six motions that were taken on our legislative that you watched on that TV, and it was really not an easy task to formulate language that you would think would have to be applied by an ordinance yet. When we're talking simple jargon, it should be just a sentence and no rate. And so I went overboard to give it paring down capabilities. So Dr. Dudley kind of pared things down condensed and defined the six motions. He has copies of that. So if we have our meeting tonight, he can distribute that. And we can say, in my opinion, what I'd like to do is vote us that as a package. So we can move on. So that's what I said, evaluation, recreation, purposes, uh, and other issues that we brought up as well. For Representative Pine had a whole slew of I've got a whole slew more too. Yeah. We don't have an auditorium on this side of the island. There was to be an amphitheater. If you recall, there was a, you remember that? And that was to be at the pit there out in Kalailo. There was that pit that was that, that they could turn into a kind of a, a subterranean landscape amphitheater, and that might be submerged, it would drown out all the noise because you want to have a concert go beyond 10 o'clock at night sometimes. So, this outdoor amphitheater 
in a relationship with what would be was a perfect, natural fit. We have three churches in all of Kampala. Okay. Three. Okay. Um, uh, from Fort Weaver Road, that way. There are three churches to get them out of group. I think we'll have a few more. I mean, you know, how can, how can we just have subdivision, subdivision, subdivision? I don't care what people worship, you know, I, but people need churches. I mean, that's a part of the event. You can have on the Fort Weaver corridor approximately some 10 churches. On just the corridor alone. On the Fort Bear corridor, what do you have? Well, so it's it's zero, zero at this time? We don't have any. So on the Fort Bear corridor, mm -hmm. Kapole, East Kapole, between East Kapole, where there's zero, and the 12 on the Fort Weaver corridor, 10 or 12 churches, oh, no, is the north south road. In the scheme of things in between on the north south road, Dr. Bill, you have the capacity of land reclassification to accommodate churches. There's already one that's in the the state of James Campbell, the point of the where the horse sits on Old Fort Weaver Road on the roof. And you drive by an Old Fort Weaver, you see that horse there out. Coming through Farrington going Mackay, you see on your left side the horse on the roof, and then you got the you got that's where you have the uh, the peacocks running across the road, right? Okay, that's the area that's going to turn into a huge massive church. That's just one of a couple already enslaved. Gentry Homes has another one. So when I say ten or twelve, it's already in in in, in the mix. That with Hope Peely, you'd have a couple churches. With the Gentry Homes, you'd have a couple more. And I don't know what uh, at this time which is single has slated as far as land. Are you sure within means that there's going to be any church? Because I, I don't developers board here. You I mean, interest, wouldn't you interest, church, interest the Wahoo have? Are, are, are you talking about churches in terms of buildings yeah. or churches in terms of actual groups of congregations? Because there's at least 10 churches in Capilet. Well, why are they if meeting you, in cafeterias? If, That's well, not a church. Well, <laughs> I, they meeting in cafeterias cafeterias for two reasons. One is they don't have enough money to build a church or enough following in the congregation to warrant a building. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot cheaper for them to run their organization that way. I mean, and you're so right. You know, the a, there's, there's three churches with enough people to build a church. Well, I think these are older churches that were built, you know, some time ago. They're also the major religions. You have a Baptist church, you have a Catholic church, and I don't know the third one. one. Mormon? Yeah. Okay. Well, they have plenty of money. But at any rate, um, the bottom line is, I think it, it's, these were developed at a time when, um, you know, it, it, it's kind of like they had enough money to do that. A lot, a lot of the evangelical churches meet in schools. Uh, they have one of the exchange, you know, that, you know, their native exchange. And so that they're meeting in places where they can keep their overhead in. You know, rent is a lot cheaper than a mortgage. And, because um, so, I know of at least. But there's a difference in master plan zoning. Master plan zoning of Castle and Cook and Milani have provided for a senior affordable housing designation plan in Gentry, up by Gentry, two sites designated in the master plan of a church. So it was like, yes, there's the school rentals, there's all those types of things. But at the same time, in these master plan communities, there is a designated land set aside that any church can come in. First dibs, come in, got it, quadrant off, two acres, it's designated in the master plan. I got a question for you. Yeah, anybody can answer it. I'm pretty sure I know, but I just want to double check. West Wahoo, is that contain federal money? West Wahoo, what type of development? The uh, West Wahoo. No, 35 million state. 100 million was in bonds, so to speak, with the land swap with Hunt that has gone awry and is no longer of viability. So right now the $35 million is all that there is expended to be expended rather. So you have a so there's no federal money. There is no problem. federal money. Right. And what about the North South Road is getting federal money. 80%. Right? That's why it was good. Eighty percent. But that is federal money. Yeah, well there was okay. you know excluding seventeen million dollars of emergency funds, of which Lingle had to appropriate after Katrina. For the North South Road, and if you include Fort Weaver Widening, it's 30 million. So we've got an executive branch that has really allocated money that was never there to make sure our infrastructure takes place and takes hold. So you have two executive branch actions to bring the North South Road over to above budget, widening over to above budget. Now the governor's released the funds to make sure the North South Road is completed 
It's a $162 million project, three of the six lanes, fourth lane being shoulder lane. They've levied, leveraged next year's $140 million federal allotment. It's the last one in the Transportation and Authorization Act, President Bush's regime. Last allotment in 09 is $140 million. North South Dakota costs 162. So the state in its entirety is supposed to get 140 million. The governor has taken and leveraged the monies from next year's federal allotment to just pay the bills on the North South Road. That's how bad it is. That's how that's that's the dire straits of getting more infrastructure monies for the for roadways here. But it is that bad. The water is going to pump a bunch of money. Say. It's four billion. In the, the highway fund of the U.S. DOT highway fund is four billion in debt. Four billion in debt. All right, and that's I would say that the next administration that comes in and says we're going to make infrastructure. The recommendation is to raise our federal gas tax by forty cents in five cent increments over eight years. That's the plan that was recommended by the National Surface Transportation Act. And they had a, they had a, a group that came by and said we're going to get and build our way out of congestion and do that, which is already in the book called Ready to Go Projects. Obama has a directive to say that we're going to have an infrastructure plan, ready-to-go projects, and that's Governor Lincoln's plan. She has, and has been floating bonds for those that are called ready-to-go projects. That's the STIP Transportation Improvement Program, Transportation Improvement Program that Scott's with, with Papo, Citizens Advisory Committee. All these projects that are called ready-to-go, there's only $140 million in the kitty, federal funds. So when you bring up, Mr. Smallman, federal funds for projects, we are going to be at a stagnation because the federal piece of the pie is so small when the cost of projects are getting so large. You've got Fort Barrett Widening coming online, you've got Michael Keywood Statue coming online. You have all kinds of other projects coming up. There's just no money. Nothing is there. And here we go. And one other one that I got I come to the stage so I don't know what's been said before, but really what about you know like our friends that own O R C D and talking to us, the uh, USDA, and I was amazed to find all those grants that they have sitting there that, that I've never heard of people applied out here for world, what they call world development, but they can be applied to uh, build uh, solar voltaic energy systems, uh, you know, the things like the farmer's market and all that kind of stuff. It sounds like there's all these grants that none of them have been applied in Kapolei, Kapolei area because no one's either thought about it or uh, I don't know, it's all that's being done by Pablo and you I know you know a lot about this, but it seems like there could be a lot of money tapped into from the feds from the USDA, which has all these grants to do things that would be really useful out there, like the farmers market, or uh, you know, of course my agenda, they, they have money to uh, support the development of historic attractions. I mean, they have all these amazing grants, and I wonder how many people even know about it. And Lord, couldn't we tap into that kind of stuff? The answer is yes. So it just takes a, an organization to do that. You know, it takes leadership from elected officials to get up to the plate and start swinging the bat for us. Guys. Actually, actually, what it takes is somebody to look up the grant, see what can be applied for, write a proposal, say, hey, look, we can get money here, hand it to somebody, and then they go, oh, yeah, we'll do that. That's what it will take. It will take somebody to actually let, find let out me, what grant. Let me give you an example of a federal grant for what's called the historic. Pearl Harbor Historic Trail is that I was on the Pearl Harbor Historic Trail. Um, we had a friends of nonprofit, and there was a, a, a Rob Blandier who was putting this together with all these parties, city council members, all the people up to a party to this. What happened was is that the city and county was recognizing a certain segment of a bikeway, and then the state not. And the federal grant said you need to have concurrence. So the city municipality has to be in step and in tone with the same type of concurrence in the state of it being statute versus city ordinance. So what we had to do was put the statute, and I remember writing this for my employer at the time, was having to put the Leeward Bikeway as the Pearl Harbor Historic Trail because it was on the city's master plan. It has 75 master plans for the city of Hollywood, and they put in the Leeward Bikeway, which is a state bikeway, but then in, in, in a certain segment it goes to uh, the stadium, it's a city bikeway. So there was this piecemeal thing, the city owns a little bit of this, the state owns a little bit of that, which is functional. That's why we can't get a lot of the federal funds that he's mentioning. To get the federal funds, we have to have a marriage between the city and the state and be in unison, then you qualify. So what the state legislature did a few years back, they took the Pearl Harbor, they made it, Pearl Harbor Stroke Trails an 18.6 mile segment. Going from my Peel Point Depot Road all the way to Nakuli Lulu uh, La La, uh, excuse me, Lulu Lane Neighbor Road. So that 18 mile segment is now in statute. It's in the city's plan. It's in the state's plan. 
And now the federal funds can come through. But when you only have one body ignoring the other, or vice versa, it's really hard to tap into those bands because you always need that jurisdictional oversight, right? States leasing from Omaha. Omaha. We got a real, we got a unique DHHL has its own rules, regulations, Copperlay, excuse me, Colorado Advisory, uh, Kakaako, Hawaii Community Development Board has its own as well uh, requisites for permit and issuance of permits and height variances and all kinds of things that are unique. So DHHL, that's what we talked about our meeting. That's what was brought up here on, on December 1 was, you know, there's, you know, this, for goodness sakes, our street signal lights, traffic signal lights, it's the city and state coordinate them together. Not one has ownership, you know, this is this marriage again, but who's got responsibility? It's so undefined. And so a lot of elected officials have tried to condense our parks. Beach parks, city parks, and make it under one type of authority, overseeing the body of the domain. Yeah, because right now we're so screwed up. Farrington Highway is a city and state thoroughfare. It needs to go over, in my opinion, more south road. Yeah. Currently, Farrington Highway goes underneath Cunea Road, Fort Beaver Road. Imagine if that's a four-way traffic done. Wow, that great. Well, horrible. Fort Weaver, all of our traffic is to go over Farrington Highway. Well, when Farrington Highway meets North South Road as a plant, it's that great. But it's a state thoroughfare of Farrington Highway, except that that intersection is North South Road. It's a city jurisdiction. State law prohibits state legislators from funding city projects. So no, when, Con it, when Connell was a state senator, he brought in the, the Kamakila Boulevard extension, $4 million. We waited three years for that to be released. Governor Lingles comes in office and says, oops, <laughs> you can't, I can't release this money. State cannot, by, by the state constitution, give funds for roadway projects under city's jurisdiction. That's a city jurisdiction thoroughfare. So when we piecemeal, we have this section, this, this section, that, lights, this section, that section. I mean, you talk about federal grants, it's so complicated, because with OHA thrown in the mix, it's really, really a uh, soup. Now, are there other states where there's more than five, like California or something? Do they have a better system for environment? The state takes pride in giving the counties autonomy, right? It's called home rule. So whenever the state can, it gives the county home rule. That home rule, in a sense, is kind of somehow yeah, backwards. Because sometimes you can't give them home rule, just like we did with the rail issue. When you give the city and county home rule uh, a different guidelines, all the neighbor islands, all the neighbor islands could have used that GET tax for highway technology. That's home rule. You want to raise your tax for trans, transportation initiatives? Raise it a half a cent? Go for it, right? Maui could have done that big island. Oahu. They didn't have some If you want to raise your GDT, it must be regular transit. You cannot use it for highway technology. That wasn't a curve that on the phone. So the legislature can always intervene and, and define anything at its whim. So, so to, to the answer to your question of your inquiry is yes, the state can always take and rewrite issues. So who trumps it? Uh, I thought it's the city trumping the state or the state always trumping Let me sum it up for you in the best example because it's current. Seated lands issue. Governor Lindo writes a great article today. And that is whereby the ceded lands, which was the crown lands from 1959, were transferred to the state, right? So the, gov the Governor Cayetano and Governor Lindo's position since this lawsuit in its inception in 1995 said that the state has always had control of those ceded lands. So if it wants to lease them out and charge money or fee or whatever, it can do that. It's, it's state lands. Well, OHA has stepped up since 1978 when OHA was created. And in 1995, put in a lawsuit saying, no, 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 no. Ceded lands belong to the because of the 1993 apology re re resolution. So that's not going in the United States Supreme Court. The answer is, is Governor Lindell's article today. In her article, she says in the last sentence of her article, she says, if you want to resolve this measure, it's legislative. So the legislature has the power to usurp, to answer your question, the judiciary. If the state of Hawaii says, we're going to amend the state constitution in the 2009 legislative session that says ceded land, to be under the guise, direction, ownership, jurisdiction of acquiesced state to Oha. The legislature can do action, pass a bill, governor sign it, United States Supreme Court decision rendered moot. Is that what the Attorney General Bennett is trying to do? Mark Bennett's trying to take a position that Governor Cayetano did, and that is just that. Since statehood of 1959, the states always had, they only had to give 20% of ceded land usage to Oha. So anytime Oha ceded land is given into play, 
You're going to get X, Y, Z dollars garnered, raised from that land? Sure. you got to get 20% to OHA. That's the current relationship. Well, OHA say, well, wait a minute. Now the state wants to take the seeded land. And they're just going to they're gonna carve it up. They're going to start selling off farms before. Wow. So it's a one-time fee. It's almost as if a Native American tribe is, 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 is absolved its ability to hunt gather a fish. White Earth Reservation in Minnesota. They sold out for $50 million. They said, we forever sell our right to hunt gather. $50 million, one-time check. Chippewa tribe says, we can no longer hunt fish out of season. Before they could, they could spear, they could hunt, they could do it 24-7, 365 days out of the year. They had a, 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 a right. The state of Minnesota came in for the clause, legislature, and says, buy them out. Here's $50 million. We don't have any special hunting rights. Same thing with seeded land. Seeded lands give unencumbered rights to hunt and gather. And that's not true. If you can compete upon that right with the native wine, so-called peoples, they're 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 up. They're up that because this has been going on since 1959. This case was filed in 1995, and it's 2008. It's going to the United States Supreme Court. The United States Supreme Court only took 10 cases, not a 10 million. This one is huge. Huge. What Supreme Court only took 10 cases? They, they, they put out a calendar on the docket, yeah, they'll just take a certain segment of the session, and they took 10, 10 cases. And what is the case that... One of the 10 is our case, State of Hawaii, that says succeeding lands are under the jurisdiction of right-of-way, so to speak, of the state, the executive branch. So they can they can utilize such so-called seed lands as long as they just merely compensate the native Hawaiian. So if you give compensation, you've met that agreement. However, what Lincoln said in our article today, just to recap, is wait a minute, if you don't like it, if you don't like the US Supreme Court, which you're most likely going to decide in favor, saying the state has jurisdiction. The apology resolution does not say native Hawaiians have control of that seed land. Pretty much that's the just the rule. So legal is just saying, hey. Uh, legislature, you can trump this, you can do whatever you want. So how did the Kaka bill affect us? The Kaka bill is just a head to a body. It's just giving a definition to, to all, they're already wards of the state. So they'll be pretty much just wards of the state and wards of the federal government. That's all you're doing. You're switching one, one jurisdiction to another. The Kaka bill federalizes that ward to the state relationship. Native Hawaiians are the wards of the state. But it so supposedly creates a Hawaiian governance of some kind. As long as you don't control the purse strings, purse strings, of which the Sokaka bill does not allow for, it is still through appropriations of the Bureau of Indian Affairs. So as long as the Bureau of Indian Affairs now, instead of being Omaha. So it's like a tribal thing. It's going to be like a tribal government. Yeah, but there's stipulations in there that says they can't game, game, have any exactly. game. Yeah. And again, if you're going to control the purse strings and you give the native quote, relationship of an agreement, you give them gaming rights. The only way that you that you become solvent Lead yourself in government is by having gaming because now you control the purse strings. You have an infusion, infusion of money. They're going to give the Native Hawaiians a status with the wards of the state and have those funds allocated to the Bureau of Indian Affairs so they don't have to compete with the other five on the tribe. That's what this bill does. So it has a funneling of funds specifically that they want, but it just says the federal government's in control. What's worse? Would you rather have the banker being the state of Hawaii or the banker being a faraway federal government? To the Akaka bill in the name of a lot of native Hawaiians are really against the Akaka bill. There's really two sides to this. Oh, yeah, that's what I've heard. It's not at all. They lose popular. autonomy, they lose sovereignty, they lose ability to intervene because it's now become more of a company. The, the company settles. And so the, the applicability of applying wrongful acts has become minimized. You, you, you don't have a claim. It's just like American Indians. Like exactly. They have a they, reservation and they're sure. There it is, folks. This is all I came out to, Jax. Don't look like we're going to have a meeting tonight. So what's the plan over there? Board member Belford and Bautista, are we? We, we, we we've been checking in. We made phone calls to different board mem uh, members. Just, you know, we're still trying to get some other people to come for form. We're just looking over some guidelines right now. You all can pick up the phone and call. Um, I was talking to board member Favela a minute ago. Let me have Celeste. Excuse me? Yes, Celeste's phone number? 
the number that's listed for her on the website comes up as disconnected. The number that's on the website for Ariel comes up as somebody else. As I was just saying, I was talking to a board member Favella on the phone a minute ago, and while I was talking to him, uh, the board chair Hargrave called him, so they're both within phone contact of each other, and some board members have called one another today to let each other know the meeting would be canceled. So it's not hard for somebody to ride over here to have a quorum, but they don't seem to be choosing to ride over here for quorum at this moment. So right now we're looking to see what the requirements are if you're going to cancel the meeting, see if things are done properly. And it's, um, I can't explain. I mean, we just need two more members to have a quorum. I just, it's just such a pathetic moment. So what does this mean to me to do? The deadline for the other development plan comment is January 30th. We have another meeting on the second Thursday of January, which we could do tonight's meeting and do such business. We'll survive. But, but I mean, does those things have to be presented to the group to have at least a hearing about what if the board is going to get testimonial of Conquer in to the city council, we to finish by January 30th. Yes. The committee the board level is still trying to figure out it doesn't have that authority to do the figure and veil kind of thing. We're asked or resolved. No. So, that's so we have to have a full board meeting to take any. I could, I could, I could, I could uh, do a notice for a legislative committee meeting. I hope you guys attend. There's four. First week of January. Yeah, right. It has to be public meeting. Okay. Yeah. So you could do a, you could communicate via the internet if it was a public forum. Well, you'd have to be, uh, uh, what do they call it, noticed. You'd have to be put out public notice if you're going to have that conversation. I know the Evan Development Plan is going to be on the agenda for January. So what I do is I send an email out to all board members and I say, please change the word should to shall. I can't do that. What I can do is say a legislative committee meeting was held on December 1 in which the community took action, of which in such motion number 5 it said to do just that. I can send that email out. The minute I start proselytizing, so to speak, and give a so-called recommendation, I'm now invoking the, the Sunshine Law. So I can still communicate factual you know, things that have transpired, things of, of fact, can't take a stand. but I can, can't take a stand. Well, my question is, can't we make a public forum community bulletin board. Which is all free software. for you. Yes. Easy to do. The answer is yes. But not, then, not under the neighborhood commission's guise. Has to be independent. But once it's established, you can talk to each other. You, you, you know, they're, they're out there. There are blogs and there are things out there. There are. Hey, that's what got me going to my friends and stuff. Like I've been on internet boards for 15 years, and that's why I've got my whole attitude about what I do. And, and my whole way of speaking because I've been on many boards and I've been on many, you know, out and out fist fights with people over all kinds of stuff. And you, you know, over time you learn the etiquette of what you should not do and all that. But the bottom line is, I think internet boards are some of the greatest ways in the world for people to communicate and just say what they want to say. And you can just post things if you want to comment on this or not. And maybe if it's way out of hand, you can boot them out. They say, you know, maybe I'm seeing or doing something like that. So I think it's an excellent system for communicating with people on that. I think we, that's something they really got to consider here. Some method of online communication. And I think that Scott's uh, deal with the camera deal was, was great. If you had cameras that I think you get more participation. Because when people started just coming in on working and watching, they would say, hey, that's kind of interesting, you know, and then comment. And then you start getting more people down to the meetings. For the actual, you know, the final deal. Because the Evan Neighborhood Board and all boards are of advisory position, and that's what uh, we've been discussing back and forth is our advisory role is do you want a redundancy in government? The rest of the neighbor islands have no neighborhood board system. They don't have a neighborhood board system because they don't they find it to be redundant because it's an advisory position and has no value or weight or merit to change anything. Because whatever the board says in its advisory position can be trumped in, 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 in any type of a whim of any action. It's just it, it's an advisory, it's solely that. But the neighborhoods, excuse me, the other uh, neighboring islands 
there is no such. And, and this is um, this is money. That's what Jeff Alexander used to always say over there on this board. Jeff used to say, "Yeah, I want to be chair. Yeah, I'm going to try to get on this board and be an elected officer and all that kind of stuff." But in the meantime, I think this board needs to go. I mean, it was it was hypocritical because in the one sense he's saying, "You know, I want to use it as a pulpit," but on the other hand, he's saying, "This is this is a farce. There's absolutely no value in these boards." So we have to define when you have sunshine law and you have all these things that are of issue. When you're talking about internet communique, all of a sudden you come up with a plan of action. How do you then say that it can hold, you know, it has some sense of bearing? How does the action of a board level get to say, well, you know what? We say this about the Government Development Plan, City, County, of Honolulu, City Council members. You need to implement. We at the board said such. Well, it could be at this level, five people, right? I mean, how is that going to work out? Where's the public notice? Was it in any kind of newspaper? Was this in the public notices in the state of Hawaii? Was those means met? Uh, you know, but I think what's happening here, again, I, the internet's got to come into this because, you know, I, I, talk, I know Will Cole wrote all that work about newspapers, and newspapers are going down the drain, as we all know. The internet's taking over everything. The internet is becoming the means of communication for everything. And for not recognizing that would be insane. Rewrite that. Rewrite the name of the plan. You could be getting out, you know, like how I send out PDFs to everybody yeah. in box. Yeah. You can put all this stuff and post it on the internet. Everybody wants to just read it all and comment on whatever they think. And then when you have your meeting, everybody's like almost on the same page about what everybody's talking about. And guess what they did? Neighborhood Commission Office is doing the first in the state of Hawaii, one of a kind. Our elections, this upcoming election, is going to be online, just that. No paper ballot. I'm not going to mail you anything. Your ability in 96706 to pick 11 neighborhood board members is not going to be on a paper trail. It's going to be on the internet. Solely. Your vote is going to determine these 11 people on the internet. That is initiation. That is a start. And it's the first of its kind. And it's happening right here in our backyard. Oh. So my, question, my question is now, now the Sunshine Law. So you guys, when, when Hargrave called the members up in private and discussed closing the meeting today, not a violation. Scott, Clarity, <laughs> what do you think? I mean, we don't, we, we don't really see where there's any governing statutes for how you're supposed to cancel a meeting. There's some information about the notice. But I'm just saying, you guys, they discussed this in private. Apparently some were calling each other on the phone. That's the thing I'm a little unsure of. This is by what, number one, who placed the phone call to board or chair Hargrave that led him to conclude that the parking lot of the public library was flooded? Um, I came here and took pictures of the parking lot and mailed that to all the board members 15 minutes later. However, some members had begun to call one another to decide not to come. So who decided who to call, who decided who not to call, who said the parking lot was flooded, and why is it that I'm just talking to our vice chair on the phone 15 minutes ago and our chair calls him, the vice chair gets off the phone with me to talk to the chair. And both of them have time to talk to each other on the phone at 7.15 in the evening, but neither can come here to make quorum. I, mean, I, I, I just don't, I, I just, so it was he within his right to cancel and all those things I'm not sure of. But I'm really like yourself. I don't understand who got the phone calls and why they got the phone calls. I don't know what is and isn't permissible there. But I mean, it, it, it's, it's just maddening. I don't understand why. I just why. called the mother to find out from my union's paper. She's not concerned. When you have a meeting in January, is there going to be any problem getting this stuff through? In my, in my opinion, Chair Hargrave has the ability to just duplicate tonight's agenda and carbon copy it for January. But it says at the development plan. Yeah, so I think we'll be just fine. What? I think we'll be just fine. Okay. Yeah. That's my, my opinion is, is that by holding tonight's meeting, we could have piecemealed this issue. If at length we had just community discussion. I think it was better to be on the safe side and say we have some issues and allow full dialogue and not be under time constraints. We had two meetings to actually generate testimony. By now, we no longer have two meetings, we have one. So the pressure's on in January, yes. Can it be done? Yes. However, is it likely? It's all dependent upon us. 
Well, you had seven people here last week, uh, uh, whenever we had the legislative meeting. Say seven people from your board. Yeah, right? with great turnout on the board there, yeah. Yes, yeah. so I've seen in years. And they all seem to be unanimous. Do you think they will be unanimous at the, at the full board meeting? I think that, you know, I, I, can't, I can't comment on that other than it was, it was, it was, so, it was so premature or preliminary that by just passing the motion pretty much was an effort, in my opinion, not to actually adopt a protocol, but rather say, this really needs to go to the next stage. This is a vote of unanimity to say, yeah, yeah, I, I'm just meeting minds. Yeah, this should go to the full board. That's how I take it. I didn't take it as a mandate. I didn't take it as right or wrong, that this is what should be done. I just looked at it as trying to get it in the face of the chair. <laughs> I emailed the chair and said, hey, we took six action uh, notices of action. Work with it. That's all. That's how I see it. Just, it, it allows the chair to work with it. Uh, it's a tool. I wanted to get back to a couple of things that you were saying. I think one of the main reasons why the Sunshine Law exists is because they didn't want board members getting together outside of the board and deciding votes before they came up. Well, the board deals. Yeah. But uh, the Sunshine Law, well, who, is, it, is this a national thing, or I mean, who could find it's a state? It's a state law, yeah. Unfortunately, by being a state of initiative of the law to be out of the counties, the state accepts its own uh, legislative branch. Isn't that interesting? The Sunshine Law is applicable to everybody under the sun, but the state legislature. So they can have their own clothes over there. Correct. And it's been a fight of a battle for years. And for some reason, it doesn't make the front page of the Honolulu Advertiser. But yes, that's one of the most discouraging issues of the day. This is that we're going to apply to you and I of a greater good that we have such called democracy and transparency, but yet the legislative body not applicable? Hey, what's good for the goose is good for the gander? Well, what's that phrase, huh? Isn't that, isn't that deplorable? That's just my two cents. It's, it's just, it's too, yeah, it's just, it's a skew. And, and the other point that I wanted to make before, before we go, I just want to make this other point. Um, of the people that I know, my neighbors and friends and people I go to church with and so on, about, depending on what organization I'm in, about 50 to, uh, around 50% is, is, is what, I, what I figure out, do not have computers in their home. Uh, even a larger amount that have computers in their home don't really know how to work them. Don't know how to access them. So I don't about, have a computer in my home. Let me tell you something. They, you know, I, I learned to make those. I, I've gone back and I've started watching. I haven't been a hardcore Republican for a long time. I've really switched gears. I'm, I'm quite honestly back to the liberal line of thinking. And I've been watching the Bill Moyer show. And I, every single show I learned so much from him, including, I mean, the great guests he brings on. He brought on this guy who, um, and this, it's a huge operation, and they get tons of money. And they're giving away computers to all these people in Africa and everywhere in the world that cost like a hundred bucks to make and they do everything and then the computers can be totally, they're idiot simple, you can throw them on the floor, bounce it off the thing and any moron can do it. And every kid in Africa is getting one from these groups. And I wonder why can't they just about give these computers, why do the same deal in Hawaii? Just give basically everybody a computer. Or at least everybody in a board or something. Yeah, yeah the first they, step, they, they, they cost. $200 ish to buy. So governments and so on. And they are, they are, they work very well. For us to get them ourselves personally, we have to pay the $200 for our own and then we have to also buy one for other people. So it's a $400 investment. And the last thing that I heard on that situation uh, was that they're out of those right now. That, that may start again in the future. But for right now, that was the thing of the, you know, the, I don't know. Well, why didn't they're 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 so popular they couldn't even keep up with this? Business. Right, right. Well, they're selling literally hundreds of thousands and probably millions to, to foreign countries. And they're the ones that are buying them at that price. But for Americans to, to get their hands on one of those, you had to actually buy two and donate one. Well, that's where the state could come in and say, okay, we're going to buy them. Give one to the kids in the classroom. But well, the classroom's got my 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 eleven year old taught me how to use the computer, and I use the one here at the library. 
but the kids have access. I mean, they have a lot more access and are a lot more technologically advanced than we are. But I'm just saying, of the people that I know, because I, I, I like, because a, a lot of our stuff is done on computer, and people are communicating on computer, and I hear all this stuff. See, I wasn't noticed at all, because I don't have a computer at home. So I didn't know anything about the media. I drove in, parked, and came in, and there was no flood or whatever. But what, but I think a lot of times people don't understand that there are a lot of homes. I mean, they would rather have a flat screen TV than a computer. That's all. And so that's that's their priority. Well, even TVs can be made easier. Oh, I I I totally understand. But there's a lot of people that just don't have that extra money. Pay the monthly fee and everything like that. That's why Scott was trying to get, you know. But the thing is, with a little box of keyboard, you can turn any flat screen TV into I understand. And that would be really cheap. I mean, there's so many logical things. I understand what you're saying, but like I'm on a fixed income and I can't afford a monthly charge for a computer. I literally cannot do it. Well, there's going to be no way in the foreseeable future I'll be able to. And he's. He's getting a computer at a rock bottom price so I can send it to my daughter. So, so I just know that that's the situation. And people that bring up the fact, well, let's, let's all go to the computer. You're going to leave people that are poor or on fixed incomes or, or whatever, no, aren't technologically you know, advanced or, or, or knowledgeable of the situation. You leave those people behind. Those yeah, I say you don't have to do it. Like no, I know. I know. I understand the result. Right. They're giving right. away these, these kids in Africa, and those kids are learning how to use it. They're taking it home and showing their parents how to use it. The parents get hooked. They can't wait for the kids to go to sleep, so they can start playing with the computer. And the whole thing is just like uh, spread like wildfire. Yeah, I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing with you on the fact that, that that's a possibility. What I'm saying is the reality is different from your from your from your from your reality at this point. Now in the future it may it, it may get there. I mean we may be at where you are in terms of, of what you know you would like to see happen. I'm not arguing because I would love to have a computer, but I can't afford it. Well if you don't think it's as simple as that. I know, I know, 50% of people I know don't know how to work home. Why should all the board members automatically be given to make sure by the author of the brain process? Well, right here, people will be so blessed. It's hard enough to just keep the neighborhood board afloat as it is right now. I mean, I, I, I have a feeling probably if the economy stays the way it is, that, you know, probably in the next five or ten years there won't be any. Glenn. Neighborhood boards who we'll made the motion. Glenn. Well, that means we're heading for a Gary Budget's fire chicken. Was he a theme party? And he doesn't put out some of the party. Less so less would be having any. Well, I no, I think that, I think the computer is a good thing. I I, murky, but I definitely see. I'm totally for your side. I'm totally for your 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 point of view. I'm totally for uh, having our society get to the point where you know. What you feel is a reality is what's really happening. I disagree. And, and I throw that out. You know, I have, a lot of people, articulate, bright people, who don't understand that it's not a necessity. Television is a necessity in the eyes of most families. They have to have a television. They don't have to have a computer. They have to have medicine. They have to have food. They have to have gas. They don't have to have a computer. And, and, I'm telling you, there's a lot of people I know don't have a computer. It's it's a real shame because I'll tell you, I learned from this whole state of the field thing is how powerful I can be on the internet. Because I can get the email addresses of all the Navy commanders over at Pearl Harbor who you could never talk to any other way. And I can email them directly. And I can email the President of the United States what I think to his White House. I can email the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and I do. I could email every single U.S. senator and congressman with my opinion, and not all of them are going to read it, but it, it's an amazing effect. It, that's why a lot, of, a lot of people know me all over the, all over the United States for what I'm doing. It's all because of the internet. I could not possibly have done that without the internet. Yeah, and, and I totally agree with you. See, I'm on your side, but I just want you to be aware of the reality. Yeah, but we've got to change that. Because, okay. Uh, okay, that's otherwise we lose democracy. That's one problem. Well, I, I think I think uh, I think you're right. 
I totally agree with you. I think it will get better. Uh, but there's a lot of there's a lot of really greedy people out there, and you make a computer for say fifty dollars, and you're going to sell it for five hundred dollars or six hundred, and then you're going to add on to that a monthly bill to just get access to the to the internet, and on and on and on and on. I mean, the whole TV thing, you know, this last TV thing about upgrading. All that is 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 greed and and you know, the television networks and people that sell televisions and all that got together and said, well, let's just outlaw. Well, you know what? I saw the this world this week. Analog TV, and you know, they came out with a deal where they'll do a coupon for 40 bucks each. And they'll do basically almost pay for that box. So I hooked up that box to my old TV and it converts to a digital TV. I mean, there are solutions to these things, and the government is going to get a but, but the reality of the situation is that most people will upgrade their TV because they're a little fair. They have several TVs in their home that they bought at garage sales or whatever. Those are the kind of problems. But I still, when you look at the situation, if every household in America has to do something, and it's almost always, you know, it's it's four people the hardest. In that situation, no matter how you slice it up, I have my team on the matter, and you know, I said, et cetera, but the reality of the situation is, you know, I know we've, we've gone the wrong direction for a very long time, and, 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 and one of the problems, I think, for, for the average person is that they think they can, you know, they think they need, and that's the quote, more than they actually need. So they, they constantly are going out and buying the latest this or that, and then they can even go with that thinking. With that thinking, we don't we don't, we don't stop on we, we don't kind of like maintain our own level, our own lifestyle level. If we're always trying to go up. And we we, we said help you know, our legislators and leaders have uh, promoted that. Uh, to the to the degree that you know George W's suggestion after 9/11 was go out and shop. You know, like what? You know, we lost the car. We lost two buildings, three thousand lives, and you know, security of, of, of our state and the president of the United States. You know, because if they had been flooding, we lose. But, you know, if we don't go out and shoot, we need to go out and shoot. That's, we'll, show the, we'll show the terrorists that we're really together. But it's that kind of thinking that kind of got us to where we are today. I do, I do. Religious. All the time that have great solutions to a lot of problems. Yeah, they just do that. Let's yeah. see what these people said. The great one. They just got to take on. I have real clues about this guy that uh, was talking about how it's worth his money. It affects charging, security, DOT, and the world conception. It was an amazing parking lot to flood. But his name was Michael Pollan. He's a uh, PhD, uh, so he's a journalist and professor at the UC Berkeley. He wrote this book, uh, and I read that one. He wrote it, and so it's true. It was amazing. He thinks it's good. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just saying, what this guy was saying made such incredibly good sense that it just blew me away. Like, it fit into security, national security, it fit into oil consumption, reducing oil consumption, it fit into food, which is national transportation. It's got to be everybody's single biggest concern. So he's got a concept that gets solved or helps. Tremendously, a lot of problems. You know, yes, it's like the other thing. Everybody ignores them. Well, I think there are a lot of really bright people that have at least the starting of solutions. Many of us are all saying that was the first thing. And you know, it's, it's a situation where I hope we have a president now that we will be listening to many of these ideas. I don't think the biggest problem now is the right way to do it. Well, you know, I don't know enough about it, really. Talk intelligently about it. Um, yeah, no, you know, I, nature is, is I, I don't know, completely or whatever.
but I call it nature right now. Nature is a, it, it is a miraculous thing. I mean, nature in most cases can heal itself. I just don't know if we've gotten past that tipping point, you know, where, where it can't heal itself in this situation. Other than, you know, get rid of human beings and then everything can build back up. You know, because we're, we're, we're mostly the problem. Now, how much degree, how much, you know, for 70% of the problem, 80% of the problem, what do you think? Or a big part of the problem. Well, I got that. Thanks. Oh, yeah, absolutely. There's no question. And we, we, we have to start going that way. I just, I, I hope the new administration, you know, is strong enough and bright enough and... Well, thank you. Do mind changing those two? Has the leadership no, 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 to, to push us in the right direction. But, you know, it's, it's, it's so awesome. The problem that we have is, like, even if America gets squared away, we've still got, you know, China and India and these huge countries that are so far behind us that, you know, if they, if they go the way we went, if they develop the way we went, they're screwed. No, I know. If they can, but I'm saying if they continue, because our populations just dwarf us. And together, it's, you know, our impact is minuscule. So, and you see that satellite photo shows giant, dark, brown, gray cloud over yeah. Southeast Asia. Yeah. So those people are already doing yeah. a lot of Los Angeles. What can they do throughout the entire region of Southeast Asia? To be young, I mean, what could Hawaii do? Well, Los Angeles is a peculiar situation. It has an inverse layer, but... Well, that area does... Yeah, yeah, it's like that. It has the ideal condition to be another Los Angeles, but it has an inverse layer. Right. That traps a whole strong right in the middle of the country. Fully aware. I went to China to pick up my daughter, and uh, this was, you know, like 11 years ago, and it was, it was really bad. It was really bad in China. They're not even, you know, it's 11 years later. Now they've got cars. You know, it's like it was just, just from the from all the the mountain and just the population and the, the few kinds of you know the factories that they have and the growth that they were embarking at that time. You know, and I went to Guangzhou and Nanjing, South West of Wuhan. It was foggy and crappy, you know, weather and I just wasn't that so I was like being in the Los Angeles. So, so it means they're in healthy care posture. Absolutely. <laughs> You board members who didn't bother to show were pathetic and worthless. You voters who voted them in think twice about this. What's the point of having elected democracy when you lay around and you use back channels and phone calls to decide who and who is not going to come to a neighborhood board meeting? I mean, it's just ridiculous, seriously. Uh, uh, that you, you get what you vote for, right? So when you're complaining about the quality of your community, blame yourself for voting these people in and blame yourself if you're a board member for not showing up and doing your part. Pathetic.